Hey everyone, um, my name is Lindsay, and for today's presentation, I will be going over fluoroscopy. Now, a little overview on fluoroscopy on how it was discovered. Um, X rays were actually discovered by William Rentgen, November 8th, 1895, and then a year after that, Thomas Edison had discovered fluoroscopy, 1896. Now, some of the early fluoroscopes were actually out of cardboard funnels with an open at the narrow end for their observer's eyes, while the wide end was closed with a thin cardboard piece that had been covered on the inside layer of fluorescent metal salt. Now, this had to be done in a dark room due to limited light produced by fluorescent screens. And the red adaptation goggles were developed by William in 1919, as you see as the red goggles on this side. So radiologists can function while performing the exam. Now, the reason I chose to research fluoroscopy was when I first started the semester here in radiology school, I had read a little bit about fluoroscopy and it kind of captured my interest because of how the exam continually obtain the images throughout with movement. So I've always been fascinated about it. Um, even at clinicals, I have asked other uh, radiology techs about it. So this just really captured my interest and wanted to do a lot of research on it. So that is what I'm doing for you today. Okay, what is fluoroscopy? Now, fluoroscopy is similar to an x-ray movie, as I would call it. it. It's a continuous beam that's passed through the body part being examined. So the beam is actually transmitted to a TV-like monitor, so the body part in motion is seen. Now, this exam enables radiologists to look at the skeletal, digestive, urinary, respiratory, and reproductive systems. So there are two types of fluoroscopies that can be performed for barium x-rays and cardiac catheterization um, fluoroscopy. So in barium, uh, fluoroscopy used, used a lot. Fluoroscopy allow, barium fluoroscopy allows the doctor to see the movement of the intestines as the barium contrast moves through the patient and allows the doctor to position the patient for spot imaging. That's a little information about barium x-ray fluoroscopy. Um, in cardiac catheterization fluoroscopy, it is used as, as an adjunct to enable the doctor to see the flow of blood the coronary arteries in order to evaluate the presence of arterial blockages. Now fluoroscopy is, all, is also used to locate foreign bodies and for image guided anesthetic injections into joints or the spine. Fluoroscopy, I would say, is a lengthy exam that takes part in a, a very high patient dose. So the x-rays are used in arrangement of ionizing radiation and patient dose has always been significant. There have been many studies of newer philosophy technology, which I will go over that later. Uh, we are all exposed to small amounts of radiation called background radiation and radiation doses from fluoroscopic procedures vary depending on the type of procedure like medical condition, patient size, and techniques. So it, it varies. The performance of the fluoroscopy system with respect to radiation dose is best characterized by the receptor entrance exposure and skin entrance exposure rates, which is assessed by intervals. Now to talk about more into radiation dose, here's a chart of like patient thickness, and KVP, or radiation. Now, the maximum exposure rate for fluoroscopy to the patient is 10R per minute. 
The low dose techniques include heavy x-ray beam, use of a low frame rate pulsed fluoroscopy, and use of the low dose AEC options. Now using a larger field will help reduce patient dose. Now going into occupational exposure, Occupational exposure to radiologists, nurses, and other workers that work in the fluoroscopy unit can be high. So using protection, lead aprons, and reducing the time will help with radiation dose. All right, and a case study I researched was a study aimed to investigate any reduction in radiation dose between older fluoroscopy systems and newer fluoroscopy systems. And the measures of radiation doses were collected over a two-year period. So each procedure was separated into seven groups. Now patient characteristics, fluoroscopy times, number of digital acquisitions, procedural times, procedural successes were largely similar between the older and newer systems. Now, it was discovered that the overall dose area product was reduced by 91% with the new system in all seven groups. So it was shown that the newer technology of fluoroscopy did reduce patient dose by significantly. All right, new research. Something that I had no idea existed was computed tomography fluoroscopy. Now, CT fluoroscopy is an excellent tool for reducing radiation dose and saving time on fluoroscopy procedures that don't require a CT scan. Now, this exam does provide re dose reduction over CT while still obtaining an adequate image. And this new procedure is for deep organ lesions and will decrease procedure by factor of two. For electrophysiology, this also provides a lower patient dose for electrophysiology catheters and provides adequate image quality. The studies I have researched have enlightened me that dose radiation is a significant factor for fluoroscopy. An advancement of fluoroscopic technology is expressively helping lower patient dose extremely. So thank you for watching my presentation. I hope it helps. Thank you.